Hello everyone, this is KIDM the man bringing you all another model kit review of the premium Bandai figurized standard Kamen Rider O's Tadajo Combo or if you follow what the box says, Tadadoru Combo. As you know, this is a plastic model kit which will require three things from you, building it, painting it and applying some color correcting stickers. I'm slightly late for this review, but that's due to how I like to take my time to customize this figure and making this review as fancy as possible. So without further ado, let's get started. The sculpting of this kit is amazing. I should know, I built it myself. This is actually my first time and experience building a model kit that's using a similar frame to Kamen Rider O's. Yes, I rarely build the standard releases. The building process was fun, and although it comes with very small accessories, you can leave them aside to build them last. I built this kit with minimal stickers applied, and some painting was required for it to meet my standards. The head of the figure is nicely sculpted. It's not like your regular rider helmet that not only comes with one but two visors. Bandai has found a way to engineer the kit to implement a second visor in front of the faceplate. Due to the secondary visor being in front of the faceplate, you can't really see the colour of the eyes. But coincidentally, it also comes in red, so you get double red eyes. Since you have to apply a foil sticker behind the eyes, just like every other rider kits, you can still see the compound eyes effect behind two layers of clear red plastic. Referring to online images, I've applied some black panel line paint to make the head more show accurate. As usual, there will be some hard to reach places especially if you paint it after building the kit. What I mean by that is that it's hard to paint the sigil on the forehead after the fact. As you can see, there should be some black paint in the indents of the sigil. The helmet should be fully in black with some red pieces that forms the bird sigil. So for those of you who has this kit or are planning to get it, I would suggest to panel line it first before building it. If you can see from my copy, that area with that little black dot there should be painted in black. That's one of the hardest to reach places. The gem on the forehead is made of the exact same material as the gold infused plastic included in the kit. As mentioned, I built this kit before painting it, so I was lucky enough to have a black panel line drip pen to which allowed me to drip the black paint to fill in the crevices of his mouth plate without any issues. For his neck, the same method was applied. The logo on his torso came pre-painted out of the box with some nice candy red paint applied, as you can see from the unboxing segment. Fair warning though, it's actually prone to some paint chipping, so it's best to leave it as the final installation. The gold ring around the logo is the same gold infused plastic that we've seen before. It's slightly bit dull, but you can always paint it with the gold of your choosing. The sides of the torso is actually a sticker. At the time of this recording, I did not have any paint similar to the red plastic, so the sticker will do for now. Maybe once these stickers have worn out, I'll go ahead and paint it. As for the shoulder, it's pretty cool. I've been looking through plenty of online images from both the toys and the screen images, but I still can't put my finger on which areas I should be panel lining. So maybe you folks in the comment section will let me know. One thing you need to know is that the shoulder pieces are hard to put together, so be careful when assembling it or sand down the pegs for easier installation. I've also missed out on painting under the shoulder pads, so don't hate me on that. The biceps of the figure is nicely molded, giving you an area to place another sticker on it. The shoulder pads are on a hinge joint, giving you a clear view of the biceps and helps with articulation. The sculpting of the forearm is consistent with the rest of the figure, plenty of areas to panel line for future me. Just like the first appearance of Tara Joel from the series, he didn't actually have the Taja spinner with him, so this is actually show accurate, from a certain point of view. The O's driver is actually sculpted mainly in a greyish silver plastic with a cover plastic molded in black. Of course, some stickers are required to give it a blue detail, but you can also paint the background of the driver to give it the show accurate look. It's the same driver that came with Tato Bar, so if you have it, it should be a familiar build. Taking a closer look, here are his core medals. They are very tiny and easy to lose the moment you drop them. So to create some extra friction in the belt, it's best to paint both the belt and the medals so as they do not fall out of the driver. For the remainder of the belt, I did some minimal paint apps to make the design pop. The metal scanner can rest on the right side of the belt and it's removable, so we'll take a closer look at that later. Taking a closer look at the bird bird of this bird, 
The same candy red plastic is used along with the familiar semi-glossy matte black plastic. I've penalized what I could at the time and I gotta say it really does make a difference. From just having the black plastic with a candy red armor to having some character to it. His upper thigh still does need some work but even without it, it still does look good by itself. Sort of. The lower half of the figure does have a lot going for it, starting off with the kneecaps looking like fancy rubies. The condor legs does have their own wings, just like on the show, plus it really does look like crow's feet, or condor's feet, as they're skinny like how gym goers skip leg day. A condor's feet aren't complete without their very own claws. These claws are short as with any other claws when not in use. If you aren't a fan of these gold infused plastics, as usual, you're free to paint them, but another fair warning, the claws on his feet are very, very tiny. Lastly, we get to see the patterns of his boots, which is the same as Tato Bar. Comparing to the others that we've seen before, this design does look a bit bland. The back of the figure is simple enough, it requires some color correcting stickers where you have to place them according to the shape of the back. Take your time to fold and adhere each section or get rid of them and paint it yourself. I've painted the back of the belt or belt stopper and there's the signature peg hole for the included stand. The back of the head requires some panel lining and the back of the condor's wings should be painted in black for show accuracy. While you're at it, feel free to panel line his calves too. There really is a lot of paint correction for this kit. Nut marks are prevalent on this kit as with every other model kits in existence. But this should be your first time viewing them on the metallic red plastic, at least on my channel. Depending on how the piece is attached to the runner that you're trying to remove, you will get a variation of nut marks, from small tiny dots on the plastic to an obvious large darkened dot that's simply hard to remove. You're also going to get seam lines that will break the illusion of a character or a solid action figure. He comes with fists, signature posing hand, metal holding hands, or scanner holding hand, the Taja spinner holding hand, the Taja spinner, scanning charge condo legs, condo wings for the condo legs, bananas, I mean condo talons, and a giant Kujaku peacock wings feathers. If you were confused earlier, let me explain. The additional condo wings for the scanning charge attack are actually molded entirely in black plastic. The included sticker sheet comes with the color correcting stickers to mainly fill in the missing paint. But because of how the red on the kit looks so pretty, I can't bear to apply these stickers on those parts. So I took the liberty of getting what I thought would be a matching color Gundam marker, GM16, to paint the accessory. As it turns out, I was wrong, and it looks completely horrendous. It's literally shit, and I would not recommend you getting it. After doing more research, I've discovered a color that is the closest to the candy red color. That would be the Gundam Marker EX XGM03, which is more of a royal red. So I ran to the hobby store, picked this pen up, erased my past mistakes, and finished a pair of the wings. As the results speak for itself, I'm glad I went with this approach. Even though the plastic isn't as show accurate itself, it's a nice substitute. All I gotta do next is remove the shit paint with an enamel thinner as best as I can and repeat it with the royal red color. Fair warning though, most experienced builders wouldn't recommend a paint pen due to how it will leave brush strokes. But if you're inexperienced and don't mind it, have fun painting it. A quick tip, if you paint it nicely, since the parts does slant in a certain direction, you gotta start from the top to the bottom. Gravity is your friend here as it will not leave any clumps residue. Another tip would be to go through them in layers. Paint across the part once, let it dry, then paint on another layer again until you're satisfied. As for the peacock feathers or kujaku wings, it's gigantic. Both wings are actually connected to a very tiny piece of plastic which connects to the back of the kit. Just remove the existing piece from the back of the kit before the installation. The kujaku wings are nicely sculpted individually, all connecting together to the lower wing part which has a pack for you to place the other two wings in it. Fair warning though, the type of plastic used here is a thin solid plastic piece. What this means is that it's very breakable. Think of a popsicle stick that breaks like a potato chip. So be careful when putting them together and when playing with them. 
Speaking of playing, they have their own articulation, which might also cause some breakage. If you sand down the connecting piece inside it, you can have a smoother articulation. Plus, it's got good storage potential. For the Taja Spinner, it looks amazing, and all it needed was just a few different parts to put it together. Not to mention that beautiful clear red plastic. That would require some color correcting stickers for the gold and silver on it. But of course, I took the liberty to paint it as it was meant to be painted. You get an extra wrist cuff to attach to the arm and the accessory along with the adjustable handle. There's some playability for the spinner itself where the spinning lever can be pulled back allowing you to recreate some scenes from the show. It's molded entirely in red but I painted over it too. Another DX gimmick, translated in model kit form, is that the shield cover can be flipped open. In doing so, you can see the inside of the Taja spinner, with interior details nicely molded on plain silver plastic. Black washing this piece will get rid of the plain look to it, showing you the cell metals. Reason for the cell metals being molded in, because it's not deep enough for you to put the included cell metals that comes with the kit. Even though they are extremely tiny, you still can't close the Taja spinner properly. Another thing about the Taja spinner is that you could have the hand pre-installed. Seeing as the wrist cuffs with the ball joint is the only one used for it, you can place the weapon holding hand for the handle. To place it on Tala Joel, just simply remove the plain wrist cuffs from the forearm, line them up correctly, and push it in. Fair warning though, if it doesn't slide in easily, don't force your way in, as it might damage the forearm of the kit and your wrist cuffs will be loose. The kit also comes with the old scanner, which is molded in a dull gold plastic, so I decided to give it some color. It's not really show accurate now, but when I have the time, I'll fix it and post pictures on it on my Instagram in the same name. After taking some time to dry, here are the condor legs, which look significantly better than how they did before. As mentioned, you might get stroke lines from the paint pen, but if you do it right, you won't really notice it from afar. Plus, you won't be using any horrible stickers. Here's a tip to applying the condor claws. Place the claw that doesn't have the seam lines on the legs, that will be the side you'll be facing more often, so it keeps the illusion of a solid figure instead of a model kit. The O's belt also come with a coin case, just like his base form counterpart. The case itself doesn't have any articulation, so you're gonna have to remove the lid with a little force. Again, the cell metals are very tiny, so please use a pair of tweezers to grab and place them in. Once that's done, simply close the lid of the coin case and forget about them. As usual, like my other reviews, I have the liberty to hunt down a secondhand base form O's just to show you the unique feature that comes with the O's body mold. Just like the basic figure toy line back when Kamen Rider O's was airing, you can actually change the arrangement of the body parts just like in the show. Removing the head part is simple enough, just grab the top part from the side and wiggle wiggle until it pops off. For the lower half of the figure, you have to remove it from the waist, slowly pop off the butter emblem and pull out the abs of the kit. Remember to put the abs back on the butter legs though. When you're doing the same to Tala Joel, try not to scratch the paint off the envelope. You can make it so he becomes the non-brave Tala Joel combo, remove his condo legs, and you get the Taja Bar combo from that one episode. And lastly, take the remaining parts to make the Taka Brave Tora Kondo combo, albeit not entirely show accurate. And they really look amazing. It might not happen, but one can hope that Bandai will create the other forms of Kamen Rider O's. It might be a P Bandai release though, but at least we can slowly complete the set. Here he is next to the previously reviewed figurized standard Kamen Rider Kuga Rising Dragon form, the Lightning Collection Metallic White Ranger, the Dino Fury Dino Knight basic figure, and the Cade. Now that the Cade's here, we can use the belt adapter A for Tada Joel. Do note that the instructions does not have this mention, but the base form does. Simply pop off the top half of the figure, Remove the coin case cap, then the O's belt and driver, take the belt adapter A with the Neo Deca driver, and simply put it in place. And finally, pop the top half back on, and now you have Decayed as Tada Joel. So all in all, this kit is pretty great. You get the debatable final form of O's in a beautiful model kit form, tons of accessories, and the interchangeable gimmick with the base form. If you're a fan of Kamen Rider Oars or just a casual model kit builder, you should definitely pick this guy up. 
I apologize that this video took quite a while to make, but I hope I did this figure justice. The build process was easy and fun, and trying to find the correct paint colour was a trip too. He'll go great with your collection and commands the room as well. Fair warning though, if you're going to display him on the shelf with all of the accessories attached, you will definitely need a bigger shelf. So if you like this video, blast that like button, leave a comment down below, let me know if you've already gotten this kit, share this with your friends and family to show them how beautiful this kit is, and feel free to subscribe as it would really help the channel. I've got more P Bandai model kits coming rider reviews coming up, so stay tuned for that. This is KIDM the Man, and I'll see you all next time.